Hi guys, it's the Citizen here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how to mod your 360 Super Street Fighter 4 Tournament Edition stick with the Akishop PS360 PCB board so it works on all three platforms, 360, PS3 and PC. Um, I have done nothing like this before, I was very very nervous going in. Um, I used the primer from the Focus Attack website and found it uh, not very clear and I didn't find it translated well to what was on the page and to physically what to do in the stick. Um, however, having done this now, it's extremely easy. Um, I will tell you basically what to do, um, but also mind any considerations. So first of all, the tools. Uh, an Allen key to take the top off. Some slippers to cut the wires. A craft knife to take off the sheaths from the wires. I bought a jewellery screwdriver set uh, with some very small heads uh, to take off uh, the terminals and loosen and tighten the terminals on the PCB board. Uh, a screwdriver just to take off the old board and to tidy things up afterwards, some cable ties. Uh, a couple of things at this point, all I do is take the top off, nothing else gets removed apart from the old board. Uh, some of you may have seen Delusion's video um, where the turbo box comes out or the back comes out, we don't do anything like that. Um, there's no wires, additional wires needed here and initially to fit the board so all the buttons on the joystick are working uh, there is no soldering. Um, I did go the route of soldering to put the, US in, the onboard USB cable with the attached cable that comes with the board um, for many reasons, mainly so that it's already integrated um, the onboard USB jack on the, exist on the new board could come loose which means you'd have to take the top off to reconnect it. Um, it can be done without soldering with some easy junction boxes where both wires come in from an angle into a piece of plastic and a screw top goes on the top. So first things first, the top needs to come off using the Allen key. First consideration here is that there is glue underneath all of this so it doesn't just slide off very neatly. Uh, it takes a bit of persuasion and because it's metal, don't yank too hard else it will bend. Screws have all now been removed, make sure you've got something nice and tidy to put them in so they don't go walk about. And let's take the lid off. <coughs> okay, here we can see the insides. I'll move the camera shortly. Um, the mod has already been completed, uh, but that doesn't take away um, the easiness of how it is. Okay, so now we're inside the stick. Um, the easiest way to approach this is to simply look at the new board and look at the available terminals and the corresponding cables and find them and plug them in. It's as easy as that. So we have 20 ports on here. Eight buttons, your start and back buttons. There's two grounds. Five from the stick, your turbo, guide and ground button as well. Now on Delusion's video, he used all 20 wires here. So you've got one per wire, eight in your two, which is your live wire which sends the signal. There's also then a ground wire. However, to make life easier, they all come into here in this rack here, and they all mount onto a board at the bottom as you can see. And there are two ribbons that come out of the bottom, each with six wires. Now, of each of those, five corresponds to a button with one ground, another five corresponds to a button and one ground. So that's your ten buttons and two grounds. And to make life really easy, they're labelled on the board. You can't see from there, but I'll put a picture up right now. As you can see, they're labelled with the corresponding buttons. So all you have to do is simply snip these from the old board, cut them off, peel them apart from the ribbon, they come apart very easily, and take one wire at a time and go into the corresponding terminal on your new board. This is when I use the craft knife, extremely sharp, sharper than a Stanley knife. And I rolled the cable across the blade 
till it got through the rubber, pull it off. And the next consideration there is that the wire inside these ribbons is extremely thin, you get three to four strands maximum. And the terminals on the new board, um, the hole at the bottom is rounded where the screw goes into, but the bottom of the screw is flat so it leaves a wee gap. So what you have to do there is just roll around the, um, or fold back some of the raw cable so it pads out and gives you a bit more surface area and contact and something for the uh, screw to grip on as you screw it down. All these buttons bar the start and back buttons are on the one side of the uh, new board which makes life very easy. And you've also got two grounds which again are the corresponding wires from here. Once that's done, the wires from the joystick go into this side and again extremely easy. Um, you could have a diagram, I know there's the diagram on the, on the primer from the focus attack, however again looking at the old board, it tells you which one is which. So from left we have ground, right left, up and down. Again, making life easy, cut one off at a time, cut back the sheath, into the right terminal, screw it down. The next three, and I suppose the trickiest bit, is the turbo, guide and home buttons. But again, they're clearly marked on this little board here. So you pick out the ribbon from each row. So the middle row there has the ground at the top, then the guide, which is tagged as X Guild, then the turbo button. In fact, the X, the K ground at the top here is the one that this stick has that the previous edition stick doesn't have, the one with the bezel. So the ground I actually used was the second one down on the left here, which is simply labelled ground. Again, I identified the wire, cut it off, cut back the sheath into the board. Sticking it down was a bit of an issue. As you can see, they had some pillars here where the old board sat. The old board is a lot narrower. The new board would have encroached on the space where the stick would have sat. So what I did here was cut down one of the pillars, very slightly using a Stanley knife. And I got some wire hooks, um, the type that you nail into a wall that sits the wire across and flush onto the wall. Um, glued some of those to the bottom and then used the screws of the old board to sit right in and it worked a treat. So the next bit is you can use the onboard jack here to wire a USB cable via a hole that you would have to drill into your Xbox or PlayStation or PC. However, uh, as I said, the cable is supplied, fits nicely onto a quick connect plug onto the new board. On the old board, the wires are soldered into these five parts here. Um, to make life easy, there are two black ones, one's a lot thicker than the other, and there's a white, red and green. You only need the four thin wires, so that's the thin black, the white, the red and the green. Cut them off the new board, off the old board, cut back the sheath, and here is where I use the soldering. And this is where the join is. So the, old, the USB stick here runs onto the new cable. So I soldered the old and new cables, green matching green, white matching white and so on. I wrapped some heat shrink around first and heated it with a hairdryer afterwards to give it some stability and a bit of insulation tape for good measure. Once that's done, um, I actually tested that before doing the USB stick with the onboard jack to make sure every, all the other wiring rooms worked. And as long as you put the right cables to the right terminals, everything will work fine. As described, the turbo button needs to be held down, USB into your console of choice, give it two moments to register, using the stick to wiggle so you know it's working, release the turbo stick. It will then be saved in the board's memory as to which was the last console used, and you only have to do that every time uh, a new console is to be used. So carefully putting everything back together. So that's how it's done. Um, I'm sorry we didn't go through every single step. Um, I wanted to test the theory out before I recorded everything um, and it didn't work. But it was literally as simple as finding the cable that needed to go into the right terminal, cut it off, cut it back and plug it in. 
that's everything. Again, you've got numerous options when it comes to the USB solution. You can use the onboard jack, you can use some plastic junctions um, to screw both wires together, or for a more long-term solution, the soldering will work just, to, just as well. If there's any questions, uh, please leave a comment on the video. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Happy modding, happy gaming.